When it comes to undrafted quarterbacks in the 2024 draft class, you probably think of one of two names. You're thinking of maybe Sam Hartman or maybe Austin Reed. Hartman was a guy who played a ton of college football and spent time at both Wake Forest and Notre Dame and holds a ton of records. Austin Reed blew up after being at West Florida and ended up putting up huge numbers while he was at Western Kentucky. A lot of those two are getting buzzed as undrafted quarterback names, but there's one player who could actually be sneaky good and is one of the weirdest rookie quarterbacks we've seen in a long time. Today, let me introduce you to Jason Bean. If you've followed Kansas football over the last few years, you know that they went from horrible to good in a short amount of time, and many like to say that's because of their quarterback, Jalen Daniels. He's a big time NFL draft prospect and a pretty good player for him, but the backup quarterback, Jason Bean, not only was a great backup, but when he started, he was pretty insane and now has found his way into an opportunity to make an NFL roster. He's currently training with Indianapolis Colts and it's no guarantee that he makes the roster, but he has a pretty decent chance and going back a few years ago, this would have seemed impossible. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to the weirdest rookie undrafted quarterback, Jason Bean. We're gonna talk about who he is, his weird career, and how he could have a chance to make an impact in the NFL. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you can support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about Jason Bean. In order to understand who Bean is, we first need to go back in time. He was born in the suburb of Mansfield, Texas on June 9th of 1999, and would eventually attend Lake Ridge High School, where he starred as both a quarterback and a track and field athlete. At the time when he arrived there, he was the backup to future Texas Tech quarterback Jet Duffy and was being groomed to be the next great quarterback to come out of the high school. In 2016, Jason Bean had never started a varsity football game for Mansfield, but at 6 foot 375 pounds, he'd end up playing significant minutes in the state championship game. He replaced an injured Jet Duffy for the second half, and they would end up losing 56-0 to Richmond George Ranch. This was in the Class 5A state final, and Bean had only thrown 42 passes the entire season before that game. It was tough and definitely humbling for him, and he said, quote, It was a good experience for me, so I could get ready for the next season, so I know how it feels to be on varsity and the speed of the game. That's definitely a rude awakening. In terms of his recruitment, Bean did have a little bit of hype as he attended camps at SMU, Texas Tech, Texas State, and Houston, and had been working with former Texas A&M quarterback Kevin Murray, one of the state's top quarterback coaches. When you hear the name Murray in the state of Texas, you're probably thinking of Kyler Murray, and yes, that is his son, and he had led Allen High School to three straight state championships, and at the time of Jason Bean's recruitment was at Oklahoma. Bean said, quote, Coach Murray's really helped me a lot. He's really improved my mechanics from last year. After another season of starting, he was your average low major FBS football quarterback recruit, and now would have to choose his final destination. Eventually, he decided to sign with North Texas over offers from SMU, Colorado State, Liberty, and Louisiana Tech. During his junior year, he led his team all the way to the state semifinals, throwing for nearly 3,000 yards and 29 touchdowns. And then as a senior, he got even more dynamic. He threw for 2,400 yards and 23 touchdowns, ran for 947 yards and 9 touchdowns, and also was an insane sprinter as he won the state championship in the 4x100 meter and the 4x200 meter relay. He also was named the District 5A Offensive Player of the Year, and Jason Bean was a really good quarterback. He threw for three or more passing touchdowns in seven games during his senior season, and also threw for over 300 yards on three different occasions. Since he was now committed to North Texas and would be the quarterback of the future, how would he end up doing there? According to 24-7 Sports, Bean was actually a three-star recruit, the number 72 pro-style quarterback, and the 2,129th best player in the class of 2018. So, how would Bean end up doing in Denton? Well, let's take a look. So as a freshman for North Texas in 2018, Bean would actually get to appear in one game. He played against Utah State in the New Mexico Bowl and would go 0 of 2 for one interception. That was all he would do in 2018, and then in 2019, Bean would end up playing a little bit more. He'd appear in garbage time in six games before he'd actually get ample time against Louisiana Tech. In that game, he ended up going 12 of 16 for 94 yards, but once again had two interceptions. On the year, Bean finished with three touchdowns and three picks, and his role in the UNT offense was just really not that great. Luckily though, things would get better for him in 2020, as he would eventually blossom. He had four touchdowns in week one against Houston Baptist, before then starting the next couple of games. He led them to wins over Middle Tennessee, Rice, and UTEP, and North Texas would get to the Myrtle Beach Bowl, where they would lose to App State. On the year, Bean would throw for 1,100 yards with 14 touchdowns and five picks, and also ran for five more scores on the ground. After a productive season with the Mean Green, he ended up deciding to enter the transfer portal to hopefully get himself into a better position. 
He had a couple big performances during his time there, but by no means was he getting much traction in the transfer portal. Never even started a full year, and he also played at a significantly lower level than a lot of other quarterbacks. He also didn't have the high school recruiting pedigree either. He then decided to enter the portal and commit to going to Kansas. After choosing the Jayhawks, he said, quote, I'm just a hard worker. I'm ready to help turn this program around and get it in the right direction and just start to win games here. So why did Bean end up at Kansas? Well, it's because of his receivers coach, Emmett Jones. He was the program's interim coach and ended up recruiting Bean. The quarterback said his talks with Jones ended up leading him to the Jayhawks, but so did his desire to help turn around a program. Immediately, Lance Leipold would actually put the ball in Jason Bean's hands as he would beat out Jalen Daniels and Miles Kendrick for the starting job in that first game of coming against South Dakota. He ended up starting that first game, and in what was a crazy game, Bean took a knee on the final play and ended up winning. They had just beaten South Dakota, and he wrapped his arms around the football and held it against his chest. He said, quote, I think everybody sees, much like the program, like our offense, that there's going to be a lot of work in progress on different things. This was Kansas' first victory since October 26th of 2019, so it was a big deal despite it being an FCS game. In 2021, it seemed like he had found his place in Lawrence, Kansas. He ended up playing in 11 total games, but really struggled with turnovers once again. He threw for 1,200 yards with 6 touchdowns and 6 picks, and also had 2 more rushing scores on the ground. The only game he won was the South Dakota matchup, and Jason Bean was just unfortunately not winning games. The biggest moment from that season was when Kansas knocked off Texas on the road, but that was because of Jalen Daniels. Jalen Daniels had that crazy two-point conversion play, and eventually he took the starting job away from Jason. Beam was now a backup once again, and many wouldn't have blamed him for transferring away. Heading into 2022, things were pointing upward for Kansas, but Daniels was getting all the talk. So maybe thought they could be a little bit better, but they ended up getting off to an insane start. They won their first few games and even jumped into the polls. The biggest matchup would come against TCU, as Beam was actually thrown in after Jalen Daniels had suffered a tough injury. Against the Horned Frog, with an undefeated team on the line, Bean threw for 262 yards and 4 touchdowns. While he did have an interception, Jason Bean proved that he was still decent. With Daniels being injured, Bean would then have to fill in. He threw for 265 yards and 4 touchdowns in a loss to Oklahoma, had 200 yards and 2 touchdowns against Baylor, and then had three more touchdowns and a win over number 18 Oklahoma State. Kansas would get to bowl eligibility after that win over the Cowboys, and while they would drop their last three games, it didn't really matter. Bean had four touchdowns in that loss to Texas Tech before he went back to being a backup for the remainder of the year. Kansas would play against Arkansas in the Liberty Bowl, and in one of the most thrilling bowl games of the 2022 bowl cycle, down two in triple overtime, he would be called to make a play. As the Jayhawks had to go for two, Jason Bean was given the ball and he tried to force a throw and everyone was angry at him. It was a bad play and it didn't end up executing and now they had lost. After that moment, it looked like it'd be the last play of Bean's career, but then surprisingly, he did decide to use his extra year eligibility and announced that he would come back. Fan reactions were kind of mixed. Daniels had shown to be injury prone, so having an experienced backup wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, Bean had made enough controversial and inaccurate throws to get him a group of people who really didn't like him. As we know though, Bean would end up getting a lot of opportunities to play this year, as once again Jalen Daniels would struggle with injury. In their first game against Missouri State, Bean would throw for 200 yards and 2 touchdowns, and from there, he'd be in and out. He had over 100 yards and a touchdown and a loss to Texas, had 400 yards and 5 touchdowns and a loss to Oklahoma State, and then had another monumental victory. Against number 6 Oklahoma at home, Daniels threw for 200 yards, had a score on the ground, and despite two costly interceptions, helped them upset the number 6 Oklahoma Sooners. This is one of the biggest wins in school history for the Jayhawks, and definitely the biggest win in recent memory, and Jason Beam was at the front of that. After that, he'd help them beat Iowa State, and then he'd also help them beat Cincinnati on the final game of the regular season, and he'd go out with a bang with four scores there. His final game would come against UNLV in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, and he finally put it all together. In the best game of his entire career, Jason Bean threw for 449 yards with six touchdowns. This is one of the best performances of a Kansas quarterback in a single game ever, and Bean would go out in style. In total in 2023, he finished with 2,100 yards with 18 touchdowns and seven picks, and also had three interceptions. Despite not even starting that many games this past year, Bean had really good numbers and showed that he could maybe have an outside chance at getting to an NFL team. Bean endured one of the most drastic turnarounds in all of college football. He said it was surreal to be a part of this, 
and in total he appeared in 35 games at Kansas, started 23 games, and had over 4,600 yards, 38 touchdowns, and then 9 scores on the ground. After his final game, he said, quote, These past three years has been a journey, there's been up and downs, and I've learned plenty of lessons, both good and bad lessons. I think the credit all goes to my teammates, though. According to NFL Mock Database, he was ranked as the 342nd overall prospect and was projected to be an undrafted free agent. So, after his name wasn't called, where would he end up going? Well, there was an interesting connection with Jason Bean's landing spot, the Indianapolis Colts. The Jayhawks' backup quarterback is a kid by the name of Cole Ballard, whose dad is actually the general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. So, he decided to make a call over to Bean and brought him in to compete for that last spot on the Colts roster. Right now, you obviously have Anthony Richardson as the future franchise quarterback, you now have Joe Flacco as the experienced backup, and then you have that third spot where I think Jason Bean has a legitimate shot to try to make the roster. He's not only a guy who has a pretty good arm, but he can also both run and pass, had pretty decent stats over his time there, and has a good amount of experience. Who will he be competing with? Well, he'll be competing with former 6th round pick Sam Ellinger, who's been in the system and made a couple of starts for them, and former big time player Keaton Slovis. Slovis played at USC, Pitt, and most recently BYU, and it's going to be neck and neck out of those three to see who can make the roster. On one hand, Sam Ellinger has really not shown much, so why should he be given the third spot, and it might be better to go with someone else, but on the other hand, he does know the system and has some starts, so maybe it's best to keep him as the third string. I think Bean has Slovis beat out because Bean put up better numbers than Keaton and is more athletic and can be put in more different places, but Slovis is a bigger name. I can see a reason why all three of these guys should get that final spot, but I really hope that Bean gets it. If he does, he's the kind of guy who could also play both wide receiver and running back, so he'd be one of the more interesting players. Yeah, Jason Bean had an interesting career, and I really just wanted an excuse to talk about him. But what do you guys think? If you're a Colts or a Kansas fan, what do you think of Jason Bean? And who's another undrafted or quarterback rookie I could take a look at in my next video? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.